Dear learners, welcome to the last session of week 3 uh, of the part of unit 3 in the management functions and in this we would be discussing the capital and fixed asset assessment. This is again a part of the basics uh, of uh, accounting and how uh, we are supposed to make the final accounts. So we have seen the basics of accounting 1, we have seen basics of accounting 2, then we have seen the journal ledger uh, and the trial balance and in this session we would be discussing in brief the capital and fixed assess assessment and how this assessment is important for NGOs. Now what is a capital? We have been heard, uh, hearing this word quite often that this much amount of capital is being invested. So it is a kind of a financial asset or funds of an organization and that forms the capital. These funds, they are to be utilized for routine operations of an organization and the capital can be held through financial assets or raised from debt or equity financing. It is very important for NGOs because the most of the capital which is procured for the NGOs is through funding. So the capital is also required for the purpose of expansion of operations. Now suppose it is an NGO, so it needs certain amount of capital or the funds to expand its operation and reach beyond its capacity for the upliftment of the poor or the vulnerable or work for the society as a whole. When we talk about the capital funds of an NGO, these include the closing capital fund or the general fund or the accumulated fund which has been in existence for more than a year. The funds can be ascertained by totaling up the capitalized receipts such as the legacies, the life membership fees, the donations. There are different forms of funds coming inside the NGO. So these farm, farm funds have to be bifurcated or have to be divided under certain uh, heads and then they are totaled and the total amount is being used as closing capital fund. Now if it is a surplus then that means there is an excess of income over expenditure. Expenditure can be in form of payment of salaries, uh, maintaining the infrastructure, working for the poor that, uh, or working for the vulnerable. The expenditures, the expenses happening for, uh, for providing the services from the NGOs. These things, if it is the excess of income over the expenditure, then they are added to the opening capital and they are taken forward. Now if we talk about the deficit, uh, it is the excess of ex expenditure over income which is deducted from the opening capital. And this capital is the sum of current year surplus and previous year balance of funds minus the deficit. These are different types of capital funds and uh, they are important for NGOs as well. There are three types of capital funds. The first one is the unrestricted funds, second is the restricted funds and the third is the loan. All these three funds, they are used uh, as a part of capital funds. If we talk about the unrestricted funds, uh, for organizations, uh, this is one of the major form of funds. It can be in form of corpus or it can be in form of general fund. If we talk about the corpus, it is the funds which are contributed by the founders or the promoters of the non-profit organizations. If we talk about the general funds, uh, in this you have the founders contribution and it, in this you have the funds related to non-depreciable assets. Now if you go back to the last week, you will find there was a screen recording of uh, Ratnanidhi Foundation where you would find that it was the founders contribution as well. So if you just go back and see that that organization was created initially with the founders contribution. So founders contribution has funds which neither have any restriction on their use nor have been designated for any specific purpose. So they are open funds, they can be used for any kind of activities and of course the legal and ethical activities. 
the funds related to non depreciable assets these are the grants these are the donations which are related to non depreciable assets like freehold land which do not require any kind of fulfillment of the, or they uh, do not carry any kind of an organization they have just been donated in the name of that particular organization so these come under the unrestricted funds if we talk about the surplus or deficit in this it is the amount in excess of expenditure as termed as surplus or amount in excess of income as termed as deficit if we come to the third category that is the designated funds these are the funds set aside by the ngo for specific activities which needs to be fulfilled in future and they are invested in such purpose that these activities can be carried out in future now coming to the restricted funds we have seen the unrestricted funds now coming to the restricted funds these include the funds which set out subject to certain conditions like they they have certain restrictions that mean this fund has to be used for this purpose only it cannot be used for some other purpose and they have to used for some specific and they have to be agreed by the ngo while accepting that particular kind of a contribution or a donation these funds are subject to certain legal restrictions as well some of the examples of restricted funds are like endowment funds which are received with the stipulation that only the income earned can be used some funds they are related to the depreciable on or non depreciable assets in respect of which assets are still to be acquired Uh, then they have balances of deferred income like grants and donations in respect of which specific depreciable assets have been acquired these are the funds related to specific items of revenue expenditure which has not yet been incurred or not had yet has been used for a specific purpose now coming to the loans this is the third kind of a fund they should be classified under secured and unsecured nature secured loans are the loans which are raised against an asset of the ngo either fully or partially loans are classified on the basis of due dates if it is a short term loan it is it has to be repaid within 12 months if it is a mid term loan it has to be repaid within 1 to 5 years if it is a long term loan it has to be repaid after 5 years so this is the categorization of kinds of loans now talking about the assessment of capital funds uh, assessment of general funds that is the unrestricted funds now this is how they need to be uh, mentioned in the books uh, first uh, in the tabular form if you uh, try to put in the entries or place the entries the first part is the particulars and the second part is the amount in particulars you have to write balance at the beginning of the year which is known as the opening balance they say it is x x of amount then you have to add the surplus if it is the excess of income over the expenditure and whatever amount is there that has to be added there if it is a deficit you have to deduce or reduce that particular amount from the opening balance and you have to mention it there in the brackets that is the deficit and then the closing balance after addition or subtraction whatever the amount comes that amount has to be mentioned as the closing balance so this is how the capital funds are assessed if we talk about the assessment of uh, restricted funds again the tabular form is in the same manner but in this case the opening balance is there but the addition during the year throughout the year whatever the surplus is there that has to be added and deduction during the year whatever the deficits which has happened throughout the year has to be deduced and then of course the closing balance has to be mentioned 
so designated or restricted funds they are represented by specifically earmarked bank balances or investments and they should be disclosed separately in respect of each fund coming to the important part that is fixed asset what is a fixed asset we have discussed fixed assets current assets fixed assets in earlier sessions but here we'll uh, i'll just uh, take you again to the uh, part of fixed assets now these are the assets which the organization has purchased once and will be used for long time for example land these assets have a shelf life of more than one year they are used for production of goods and services and are not meant for sale fixed assets can be tangible in nature or intangible in nature in intangible we talked about the patents uh, the copyrights uh, the credibility etc which cannot be touched that is intangible uh, in case of tangible assets the depreciation can be charged annually on fixed asset over its useful life usually when we talk about the depreciation the best example is the automobiles uh, any kind of a moving vehicle uh, or automobile where the depreciation is charged on that particular asset till its useful life the fixed assets for an organization includes these are the list of the fixed assets these are just few they can be many more and it depends on the organization what are the fixed assets it holds uh, for its own organization or for any kind of an NGO. So building is one fixed asset, furniture and fixtures, land, machinery, office equipment, computers, vehicles and all kinds of intangible assets are the fixed assets for an organization. When we talk about the assessment of fixed asset, we need to consider two things, two important things. First what is the cost of the fixed asset and what is the depreciation value associated with that fixed asset for its useful life so these two things they are to be considered in the assessment of a fixed asset when we calculate the cost of fixed asset it not only contains the purchase price of the asset but also the expenses which are involved in bringing the asset to the working condition. The purchase price of asset is suppose XXXXX. So we need to add the site preparation cost. We need to add the initial delivery and the handling costs. We need to add the installation costs. We need to add the professional fees of the service provider and then the total cost of the fixed asset is calculated. So these are some of the categories which are included in costing the fixed asset and how the cost of fixed asset is calculated. So it is not only the purchase price of asset, it includes other aspects also of the service provider. When we talk about the cost of fixed assets, these are the assets acquired without a non-monetary consideration and they need to be recorded at the fair market value of such an asset. Cost of an asset which is constructed is equal to the cost of the construction activity of that particular uh, fixed asset. If an asset is acquired in exchange of another similar asset, then the value of such an asset would be equal to the net book value of the asset which has been exchanged. Now this is the final part uh, when we talk about the cost of fixed asset the improvement or repair in an asset is added to the cost of the asset only if such an improvement or repair is going to increase the capacity or the usefulness of that asset. If it is not going to increase the usefulness of that asset then there is no point in adding that cost. In fact, there is no point in use, uh, using that particular cost for repairing that asset. Any other repair or improvement is charged as an expenditure, for example, in case of computers. So it is kind of an expenditure. Now coming to depreciation. What is a depreciation? It is a measure of wearing out 
consumption or other loss of value of a depreciable asset arising from use uh, efflection of time or obsolescence through technology and market changes as I gave you the example of automobile I gave you the example of computers so these are depreciable assets and it can be charged for tangible fixed assets such as land building computers etc and depreciation is charged as per the guidance of AS6 and the purpose of charging the depreciation is to spread the cost of a depreciable asset over its useful life so as to charge it as an expense in the income and expenditure account. When we talk about depreciation, there are different methods of charging the depreciation and an organization should choose one method of charging depreciation and follow it consistently. Rate of depreciating different assets are mentioned in Schedule uh, 14 of Companies Act. Now this is the assessment of fixed asset. Again, you have particulars and amount. You have the value of fixed asset at beginning of the current year. Then you have to add the value of fixed asset during the year less the value of assets sold during the uh, year and less the depreciation charged during the year and then find out the closing balance. When we talk about the accounting for NGOs, uh, these assets are commonly accounted in a variety of ways by different NGOs around the world. Uh, the fixed assets, they appear on top of the balance sheet and the funds through grants are charged with capital expenditure in the year of purchase. The last part, the bottom of the balance sheet, uh, it shows the capital grants fund and equal to the net book value of the assets uh, funded by grants. So this is wa what is accounting for NGOs. So when we talk about the capital uh, and fixed asset assessment, these things need to be considered and particularly the depreciation related to that uh, particular asset has to be considered. So this is all for this uh, week, uh, we will be coming up with more in the next week. Thank you so much.